A reliability analysis should be carried out when you are looking at if the questions in your questionnaire measure what they are supposed to be measuring. Within this specific example, we will be looking at five questions about life satisfaction. In the data set, these are defined as LifeSat 1 to 5. If you're compiling your own data, use a separate column for the data for each question. To carry out the reliability analysis, go into Analyze, then Scale, then Reliability Analysis. Move each of the individual items that make up your scale, in this example, all LifeSat options, into the item box. Make sure Alpha is selected as your model before labelling your scale in the Scale Label box. In this example, we will be using the label Life Satisfaction. Click the Statistics button and select Item, Scale and Scale if item deleted in the Descriptives 4 section. In the Enter Items section, tick Correlations. In the Summary section, also select Correlations. Click Continue and then OK and your output will be generated. If we look at the output, the first table is Case Processing Summary. You should check this table to see if your total number of cases is correct. If not, you may not have inputted all your data correctly. The second table we come to is the Reliability Statistics. Here, it is important to check that the number of items is correct. This number should reflect how many items make up your scale. In our example, there were five. This table is also where you will find your Cronbach's Alpha, the value that tells us if the overall scale has internal consistency or not. This value should be higher than 0.7 or ideally over 0.8. In our example, the Cronbach's Alpha equals 0 0.890, meaning our scale is reliable. Next we come to the item statistics table. This is where we will find the mean, standard deviation and the overall total for each item of your scale. Check this table to make sure that your mean scores are what you would expect them to be. If they aren't, this could mean there has been an error when inputting your data. The inter-item correlation matrix should contain only positive values. If any negative values are present, this means that some of the items on your scale have not been reversed scored correctly. The summary item statistics gives us additional information about our inter-item correlations. For this analysis, however, we do not need to use these values. The item total statistics table, we need to look at the corrected item total correlation column. These values give us an indication of how much item cor each item correlated with the total score. Again, we want these values to be greater than 0.7. Items with a score less than 0.3 can be seen to be measuring something different than the rest of the scale. These values also show which item most describes the overall construct. If we look at our results, LifeSat 5 is showing to be less than 0.7. However, as our overall Cronbach's Alpha score was greater than 0.8, and this value is only slightly under 0.7, we do not need to jump to the conclusion that this item needs deleting from our scale. To help make this decision, we would need to consult the Cronbach's Alpha If Item Deleted column. As suggested, 
This column shows what the Cronbax Alpha score would become if that specific item was deleted. If the Cronbax Alpha greatly increases, it is advisable that the item is omitted from the scale. Our example suggests that the Cronbax Alpha would increase to 0.896 from 0.890 showing that deleting LifeSat 5 would not significantly affect the internal consistency of the scale. The final table on our output is the scale statistics. This shows the total mean, variance, standard deviation and number of items in our scale. And that is how you do a reliability analysis in SPSS.